this uh, welcome back. Uh, and I want to talk briefly today. I won't be too long. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, uh, the seal of our salvation. You said that, so I'm going to name it that. The seal of our salvation. Uh, we were kind of touched on it briefly. Pastor Elphase just said that in the morning Bible study. Uh, but I want to talk about the seal of our salvation. Uh, because we were talking about the seal of circumcision, right, with Abraham. But I want to talk about the seal of our salvation. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Because I want to show you some things so you leave here with an understanding of how you're saved, who you are in Christ, and that nobody can ever take that away from you. Not even yourself. Uh... Where am I at? Galatians, Ephesians. Okay, Ephesians 1. Now, I, I talked a couple weeks ago about Ephesians 1. We started off there, uh, and, we, and I was talking about who we are in Christ and what God has done for the church, the body of Christ, and those who are partakers of the body based on what you believe. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to drop down to verse 7, but... Let's read verse 3. I want, to, I want you to see this. Read verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Uh, verse 7 is where I'm going to pick this up. Because we've covered this, but I want to read this for those of you who didn't get a chance to see it uh, or hear it. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with what? All, All spiritual blessings. Where at? In heavenly, in heavenly places. In who? Christ. In Christ. We only receive spiritual blessings in heavenly places if we're what? In Christ. In Christ right? <laughs> Understand that. According as he had chosen us and him before the foundation of the world. Now who is the us here? The body. The body of Christ. It's the body of Christ, not us as an individual. Right? If God predestinated the agency of the body of Christ before the foundation of the world, you can be made partakers by just a simple belief. Right? So notice God created us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in what? Wow. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. God's will was that back here before the foundation of the world, he, chose, he knew the program and how his chosen people would reject him. And he knew that he had, because Satan rebelled, he knew that even the heavens were not clean in his sight. So he needed an agency to reconcile the heavens back to himself. Mm -hmm. Because the agency that will reconcile the earth is the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So God knew this before the foundation of the world, and he predestinated the body of Christ through his son, Jesus Christ. Right? And it was all according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. We're accepted in the beloved based by his what? The glory of his what? Grace. Grace right? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the what? Forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. When Jesus died on the cross, your sins were paid for. He's the redeemer. To redeem something means to buy back, mm -hmm. right? So your sin, your, your sin has a debt, but it's already been paid, <coughs> right? And I'm going to get into this, but it's already been paid. So uh, Brother Bird always uses this example, and it's a good one. He says that if you ask me to come pay your mortgage for you next month because you're short, and I say, you know what? I'm just going to pay the whole mortgage. Will you be able to go pay your mortgage next month? It's paid. How are you going to pay it? It's the same thing with our sins. If you're saying I got to go repent to get my sins forgiven, how? They've already, what does this verse say? They've already been forgiven. So you don't have to pray no Lord's Prayer, oh God, forgive me for my sins and ask me into your heart. Now, why do you have to do that? He's, al he's already forgiven you of that. Because Romans 5 and 8 says God commended his love toward us, and while, and while we were yet sinners, Christ did what? Yeah. Died for us. So in your sinful nature, before you were ever even thought about, God, Jesus Christ, died for you. Right? Throughout your life, 
We got all people of all age groups in here. Throughout your life, I myself, and this is how I like to think about it, just my sins alone mm -hmm. was a lot on that cross. Mm -hmm. Now imagine all of yours included with mine. <laughs> <laughs> so just imagine all of yours included with mine and then the whole world. He died for that already. Mm. That's why in, in the Gospels it shows a vivid description of what he went through, the anguish of what he went through. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you get saved, you understand that I don't want to live anymore because I understand what he did for me. And if you don't want to trust in him, then you're going to have to stand before God to, to, to pay your own sin debt. Pastor, can you touch one more time about the word repentance? Because there's a misconception about what that word actually means. Yeah, repentance is not the forgiveness of sins. We were, we were taught in the organization we grew up in that forgiveness was, I mean, repentance was asking for forgiveness for your sins. Repentance is just a change of mind, right? So you don't have to repent to be forgiven because what? You've already been forgiven, right? God did this before what? The, before the foundation of the world. We just read it. So it was already forgiven. Repentance just means a change of mind. After I come to Christ based on what I believe, now as a saved person, my repentance is to change my mind from my sinful behavior to, towards God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a turn around and about face. There you go. There you go. Turn around and about face, the uh, military term, right? Doesn't that happen at the point of belief? What's that? That happens at the point of belief. It, it can't happen at the point of belief. Need to renew it. Yeah, it, it, can, it can't happen at the point of belief. But understand the point of belief, some people are just ignorant to everything. And all they do is hear the word of God. Some people may have never heard it, so they're not turning away from, from anything other than this just new knowledge to me. You're right? So, so, so if it's just somebody just random off the street who's never been to church, never heard anything about God, they don't turn from anything. They just believe what they hear. Right? And that's what we're going to see here. All it is is just believing what you hear. That's it. Right? So, so understand that. Look at verse uh, Look at verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good flesh, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together one and all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are where? Oh. Even in him. Notice that he's going to gather those in Christ on the earth and those in Christ in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's that heaven and earth, right? Mm -hmm. And whom also we have obtained and what? This is where I want to start with. We have obtained a what? Inheritance. Inheritance, right? Uh, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his what? Own will. Own will. So, how do we obtain this inheritance? Look at verse 14. Which is the earnest of our what? Inheritance. Unto the redemption of the purchased possession and to the praise of his glory. Look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his what? Inheritance. Inheritance in the what? Saints. You receive an inheritance the minute you trust that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he paid for your sins, and he rose on the third day for your justification according to the scriptures. If you believe that, you're saved eternally. Eternal is how long? Forever. Nothing can take you away. Now all of the spiritual blessings because you're in Christ in heavenly places are given unto you. That initial inheritance is a citizenship into the heavenly places, right? So once you're set, once you believe that you are you are in Christ and you receive all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, go with me to Romans chapter four. Oh, one minute. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Uh huh. The earnest is a banking term. Down paper. Financial. I'm, I'm going to get there. Uh -huh. For already earnestly. Exactly. You can't take it back. Exactly. I'm going I'm to I'm get there when we get down to that verse. But good point. Romans 4, look at verse 4. 
Now to him that worketh is the reward, not record of grace, but of what? So inheritance is a what? Oh, no. Is a reward, right? Inheritance is a reward, which is not gained by what? Working. Because if inheritance is in gain, if, if, if the inheritance is gained by working for it, then that means it's a debt and God owed it to you. Right? But understand, to him that worketh is not the reward reckoned of grace. Grace is what? Unmerited favor, giving it to you even though you don't deserve it. Which means I don't have to work for it. Right? So understand the inheritance that Paul, that God is talking about in Ephesians 1 through Paul is the inheritance of all those who will believe in Jesus Christ. Right? Now look at verse 5. But to him that do that does what? Work is not, but what? Believing on him that does what? Justify the ungodly, right? His faith is what? Counted for righteousness. Can you go to a seemingly contradictory scripture in reference to this <laughs> that they like to use, but this clarifies that that scripture is not for us, James 2? Oh, yeah, James 2. Let's go to James 2 real quick. Uh, Brother Jared uh, is out of town. He called me last night. He said he did a, he's uh, out of town with his in-laws, and they had a Bible study that he was doing. And they were confusing these verses. So he just called me about this last night. He said, I told him this, but I want to be sure. I said, yeah, you had it. You had it. <laughs> there you go. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to James 1 and 1 and understand who God is talking to. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To who? Twelve the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greedy. Now we understand that the twelve tribes of Israel were scattered abroad in Acts 8 based upon the persecution. Right? So they were scattered abroad. Now, understand the three things when you're studying your Bible dispensationally that you must know. It's first who wrote the book, who were they writing to, and in what dispensation were they writing. Right? So we understand this is James writing to Israel in the dispensation out here of this of the tribulation, right? So now let's go to James 2. Let's start at verse 14. Now Paul just told us in Romans 4 that the reward is not reckoned of grace. I mean, the re if you work, it's not reckoned of grace, but it's debt. Mm -hmm. But then the next verse he said, But to him that worketh not, but just believeth. So that means that's faith plus no works. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at what James says. Verse 14, James 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brother, though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Mm -hmm. Now, we can answer that question and say, surely it can. Amen. But to Israel, because they always had to perform to please God, then they can't just have faith alone. They had to have faith plus works. Right. Right? Then he goes down, now drop down, to, for the sake of time, drop down to verse number 22. Because they both use Abraham. Uh -huh. But Paul uses Abraham according to Genesis 15. Uh -huh. He, James, uses Abraham according to Genesis 17. Now in Genesis 15, Abraham believed God and it was counted for righteousness. He did no work. And in Genesis 17, he received the seal of circumcision. Right? That was the work that was to, to, to seal the promise. But understand, Paul says, was he not made righteous in uncircumcision before circumcision? Uh -huh. Romans 4 and 10? Right. Yes, he was, yes, he was. Right? So understand, James is using him, Abraham, to show that you need faith and works as according to the seal of circumcision. In fairness, James couldn't see that. James couldn't see that, right? Because it's a mystery given to who? Paul. Paul right? James was only speaking... Because in verse 1 he says, a servant of God is of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Right? But look at James 2 verse 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and thy works was faith made what? Perfect. But our faith is made righteous the minute we do what? Believe. Believe. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Look at verse 24. You see then how they, by works a man is justified and not by faith only? And Romans 4, Paul says we're justified by faith, and that's it. It's not a work. 
Go to Romans chapter number 6. Go to Romans chapter number 6. Look at verse 23. Now we're still talking about the inheritance. Which is, the inheritance is not a merit of your own work, but it's a merit of what Jesus did. Right? So now, uh, Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Meaning that the, the payment for you living every day is what? Yeah. Because where does sin dwell? In, flesh. In your flesh. So until you get a resurrected body, you'll still be sinful in the eyes of God. But understand, when God saves you, based on you believe that he died and was buried, paid for your sins, and rose again for your justification, when you believe that God quickens your spirit, right? And now that your spirit is quickened, your spirit can no longer sin. Why? Because it's the, Jesus Christ, is, the Holy Ghost is now living in you. But your, your sin does dwell in your flesh. That's why Paul says in Galatians 5, the spirit lusteth against the flesh. Because one is perfect because we receive the righteousness of Christ, and the other is exceedingly sinful, Paul says. So I, in my spirit, I want to do what God says, but in my flesh, I want to do something that's pleasing to the flesh. Right? Understand that. Look at... Uh, uh, so, verse 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but, so whenever there's a but, there's, there's a, that's a contrasting word, right? So whatever was said before is, is basically nullified with what's about to be said after. So, for we understand that it's to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, we're justified. But the wages of our sin is death. But the what? gift of God is what? Eternal life through who? Christ. Christ. Now how long is eternal? Forever. Forever. So I receive the inheritance based upon my belief which is forever. And it's a what? Gift. If I give you a gift, then it's free. If I say, well you know what? I just want to give you a little something to help you out. I'm going to give you this, this gift of $1,000. I'm going to give you this. Who in here would say, whoa, I, I got to cut your grass or paint your house or something. I got to do something. You just can't give me $1,000. Who in here going to say that? Yeah, nobody. You're going to accept the money and you're going to say, I appreciate it because I needed that. Right? So it's the same way with God's grace. I can't do anything in and of myself to be righteous. So when I when I receive this grace, I say thank you because I needed that. Amen. Because it's grace that saves, right? Uh, I saw your hand. Your hand. Okay. I was going to say that how long eternity is is as long as God lives. There you go. And there's no end and there's no beginning. That's good. Okay, this sinner that was on the cross next to Jesus when he was crucified, uh -huh. and the Lord said, "Your faith." Was he looking for work for somebody who's gonna die at the same time? Say, say that one more time. On the cross, uh -huh. the sinner next to him. Uh -huh. The two thieves. Did he save him right there? Uh huh. Based upon his faith. Works. When we hear people talking about you after work. Yeah. No. How it, can you work if he saved you right there? Exactly. exactly. That's a good point. And, 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 and he can't. And that's a, that's a point of what Jesus will do based upon faith. And understand that in that time, he marveled at the unbelief of Israel. Right? And there's two thieves on the cross. One was on the gateway of heaven and went to hell. The other one was on the gateway of hell and went to heaven. Right? Based on the belief. One said, well, if you, Jesus, shoot, save yourself and then save us. The other one said, well, listen, I, if you the son of God, just listen. Remember me when you go into your kingdom. That's it. Pure faith. And God said, he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Right? That shows a location change, too, from Abraham. There you go. So notice that. That's a good. So notice Jesus said, you'll be with me where? In paradise. Where was paradise? In Abraham's bosom. He had to go there first. He had to go there first. Right? So that then he checked, then he brought 
held the captives, captives, and all those things. So understand, they first went to Abraham's bosom, right? Got the keys. Yeah, and he grabbed the keys. There you go, right? So, so go to. Uh, does that clear it up for you? There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, go with me to Colossians one. Colossians 1, verse 11. Colossians 1, verse 11. Let's look at this. Uh, Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joy fullness. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance, inheritance of the saints in what? Life. In life. So listen, the minute you believe, you're now given an inheritance and a heavenly citizenship. Now, do we stop there? No. That's the first part of God's will. God's will, according to 1 Timothy 2 and 4, is that all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Right? So now that you understand how to be saved... You need to understand that that salvation is going to be sealed until the day of redemption. And now you come into the knowledge of the truth. Go to Colossians 3. Because of that inheritance, mm -hmm. there's a reward. That's right. A reward is based on the latter part of that scripture. Uh-huh. Of, of 8, Romans 8? No, no, no come into the knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Colossians 3, look at verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the what? The inheritance. So you get the citizenship based on what you believe. But you get a reward of that inheritance based on how you serve the Lord. How do you serve the Lord? By studying to show yourself approved. Amen. Right? Amen. And then it's the word of God that effectually, 1 Thessalonians 1, effectually works in you. Right? Go back to uh, Ephesians 1. The reward ain't for feeding homeless people, giving all your money away. Yeah, exactly. The, the reward is not for doing any, any works of any good works, but it's, it's given for righteous work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're able to do righteous work is to have Christ built up in your inner man. Because it's no longer you that's going to begin to do it, but it's going to be Christ that liveth in you. The will of God, he wants the life of Christ to be lived out through you, right? You receive Christ's righteousness the minute you believe. But not every man, or every person, mankind, not every person in the body of Christ will serve Jesus Christ. Because not every person will understand and come into the knowledge of the truth. There's some people in the denominations who are saved based upon that belief, but who are teaching the law. So are they considered vessels of dishonor? Vessels of dishonor. There's going to be some to honor him and some to dishonor, but we all receive the what? Inheritance. But not all of us will receive the reward of that inheritance, right? Because there, 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 there's an incentive for living right, right? Yeah. Uh, go back to Ephesians 1. That, that, in, in saying that, Pastor, the, the incentive has a, has a dual purpose where you receive the reward of the inheritance, but it's also good and profitable for men. Exactly. Exactly. Because Titus 3 and 8 says, uh, be careful to maintain good works because it's profitable unto men. If I go and feed the homeless, that's profitable unto that man. Why? Because now, because his stomach is full, I can preach him the eternal salvation. You see that? I can't go to my, hey, man, Jesus Christ said, just have faith. He's going to do it for you. And he's sitting there with his stomach in, in his back because he's so hungry. And you sitting there with a big cheeseburger in your hand and you telling him to have faith. Right? So, 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 under, so understand, understand it has to be, you have to be able to minister to their physical in order to adhere to their spiritual. Amen. Right? Uh, Ephesians 1, look at verse... Verse 12, that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in what? Christ. 
Now, who is the we here? The body of Christ. Let's read this again. In whom also we have, look at verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Who first trusted in Christ? Israel. The Jew first trusted. Understand, in Ephesians, Paul was dealing with both Jew and Gentile within the body of Christ, right? So understand here, we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Now, in, in, now look at this. In whom ye also trusted. Okay. okay. So he had, look at verse 13. So he had two audiences in the same place. There you go. Verse 12, let's read them both. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. So if it's both the body of Christ, he wouldn't be saying we and ye. That's right. He would be saying us, as if he said the first ten chapters. That's, that's because they haven't collectively came together. At that they, 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 that's why he's going to say in, in Ephesians 2, he's going to say uh, uh, the Gentiles were set apart, separated from the promises and the covenants, but now ye are made draw nigh by the blood of Christ. Oh. Came out saying, oh, so is the weed a little sparky? Yes, yes. Yep. Go, go to uh, Acts 18. So he included himself. He included himself in that. Yes. To to win to win those. There, there you go. Because his message initially was to who first? Israel. To the Jew first, then to the Greek. Right. Exactly. Yeah, Acts 13, they considered themselves unworthy, so lo, the, uh, the word would go out to the Gentiles. Look at Acts 18. Acts 18, verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, excuse me, and sailed thence into Syria and went to Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Caesarea, for he had a what? Vow. So vow. And, and then, look at verse 19, and he came to what? Ephesus. Ephesus. So understand, his message was to the Jew first. He had a Nazarite vow, which is of the Jews, because Paul was a Jew, right? He came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the who? Jews. In Ephesus. So at this point, he didn't exclusively go to the Gentiles. Not yet, right? Not yet. Not, not initially. Right? Huh? There you go. There you go. So now, go back to Ephesians 1. Uh, I want to get these, these next two verses, and we're done. So, so that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, the Jew, and whom ye, Gentiles, also did what? Trust. Trusted. After that you did what? Believe. No, after that you did what? Heard the word. Heard the word of truth. <laughs> right? Now, this takes away the Calvinistic view that they think that God predestinated some to go to heaven and predestinated some to go to hell. But what does this say? In whom ye trusted after that ye did what? Heard the word of truth. So if you hear the word of truth and you trust it, you can be saved. It has nothing to do with God ordaining this person and not ordaining this person. Because if that's the case, then that's not a, God, that's not a sovereign God. Because he's not giving us a free will. Right? And that can't be so. Uh, so, so, so understand that here. Now, it, notice that it's after that you what? Before you can trust, you got to first do what? Yeah. Hear. Hear it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to church and they're preaching to you law and law and law, you've never heard it. Uh -huh. So you can't trust it. More excellent There's a more excellent truth, right? So understand. Uh, now, in James 1 and 18, he says that I have the word of truth. But we understand that James 1 and 1, who is he talking to? The Jews. Israel. So that's why we have to rightly divide. Because it's after you, after you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth. What word of truth did you hear? Oh, that's right. 
Did you hear, repent, be water baptized, and have received the Holy Ghost for the remission of your sins? That was the gospel that they said. Because that was the word of truth back here. Or did you hear, to him that worketh not, but just believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteous. That's why Paul says, right, to divide the word of truth. There you go. Because all of it's the word of God. It's all true. That's why he said, he doesn't say right to divide the word from the error. He says right to divide the word of truth, which means the Bible, the word of truth, needs to be and must be rightly divided. Because everybody has a word of truth. Mm -hmm. um, David had the word of truth. Moses had the word of truth. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist had the word of truth. Everybody had the word of truth because it's whose word? Oh, no. It's God's word. But God was not talking to you back over here. Right? Look at, look at uh, Ephesians 1, verse 13. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of what? Of your salvation. What is the gospel of your salvation? Go to Galatians 2. Go to Galatians 2, verse 6. Let's call this blunderizing the word of truth. What's that? Blunderizing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mixing it all up. Mud. Mixed up doctrine. Galatians 2, look at verse 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whosoever they were, it make it no matter to me. God accepted no man's person, so it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, uh, but, but none of these people added anything to Paul. Uh, for they who seem to be somewhat in converse added nothing to me. Look at verse 7. But, here's this word again. Contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, Paul, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto who? Peter. So that means that gospel means what? Good news. good news. So there was a good news of the circumcision, which was given to Peter, and there's a good news of the uncircumcision, which was given to Paul. Now, who would have been circumcised? Jews. Jews. Who would have not been circumcised because they didn't have the law? Gentiles. Gentiles. So after ye, Gentiles, heard and uh, trusted you, after the, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation is the gospel of the uncircumcision, which was committed to who? Paul. Because the gospel of their salvation was the gospel of the circumcision. So you need to understand what gospel you're adhering to and trusting. Go back to Ephesians 1. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're they going to throw, yeah. And, and most people don't even recognize that verse, understanding that there's two Gospels in the Bible. There's one, there was a good news back here for the, for the Jews, and there's a good news for us today through the Gentiles. Because Jesus Christ did not come to minister to Gentiles, so he had to have a plan to save the whole world. Right? So he gave Peter instructions from his earthly ministry to minister to those he came in his earthly ministry to talk to. He gave Paul instructions from his glorified state. Mm -hmm. He was already resurrected when he commissioned Paul. Jesus. So that's why he had different instructions than Peter. Mm -hmm. And this is why he made reference to another Jesus. There early. you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because now today, Paul says, if anybody come preaching to you another Jesus, mm -hmm. which is not another, mm -hmm. right? Understand what he's saying. How can, <laughs> how can anybody today preach you another <laughs> Jesus? By preaching you Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because that's not the gospel of your salvation. That's the gospel of their salvation. Right? Look at Ephesians 1, verse 13. Now, after you trusted, after that you heard, the gospel of your salvation, and whom, who is whom? And whom? Jesus Christ. Also, after that, you did what? Believe. So in order to believe it, you got to first hear it, then trust it. What are you hearing and trusting? The gospel of your salvation. That's Paul's gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. Right? After that, you are what? You were what? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. The seal of your salvation. Once it's, all it takes is to believe, it takes no work. You're sealed. By the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed. Uh -huh. Those are one of the main verses that we use to say what saved, always saved. There you go. And I, my preacher that I left, 
tell me straight out, well, then what happened to your, to your uh, freedom of choice? And I said, you made your choice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He said, well, you feel that way. I think you're living dangerously. Exactly. And, and the thing about it is that once we're sealed, that's it. Now, let's read verse 14. I'm going to take you to one other verse, and that's it. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, verse 14, which is the what? Earnest of our what? Inheritance. Inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. Now, back to what Ken was talking about earlier. When you put a deposit on a house, it's non-refundable. I've had this happen. I lost a whole lot of money, right? Because I put down 20 grand on a house, but I couldn't get it. So complications came up. So I'm out 20 grand. Right? That hurts. Trust me. So, so, but, 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 under, but understand, understand, it was an earnest possession, right? It was an earnest down payment. What God does once we believe, after we trust it, we've heard it, we believe the gospel of our salvation, he seals us, which is a down payment of the purchased possession. Now understand, God works three things. He works spirit first soul, and then body. The purchased possession he's going to redeem at the resurrection. Right? And then he's going to say, I'm fully paid it off. Because now you're going to be made perfect because you have a what? Flesh that is made like unto his. Right? So understand, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise the minute we believe. So if I'm saved once, how can I lose it? He put down the, the payment already. It's not refundable. We're already seated in heavenly places. In his mind, we were already seated in heavenly places. Look over one chapter. And I'll see complications with him. He'll be able to come through with the rest. There you go. Look at Ephesians 2 6. That's the verse he just quoted. Perfect credit. Yeah, he has perfect credit. Amen. Uh, let's read verse. Let's read verse 4. We've got to get the context. But God, who is rich in what? Mercy. Mercy is not giving you something that you did deserve. He's rich in not giving you death because that's the payment of your sin. Right? Rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins had what? Quickened us together with Christ by grace you were what? Saved. Saved. Look at verse 6. And because you're already saved and what's the And what? Which is what? Past tense. He hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Go to Ephesians 4. Get Ephesians 4 verse 30 and Philippians 3 verse 20 and 21. Ephesians 4 and 30. Now, after I'm saved, and I know I'm saved eternally, do I live any kind of way I want? <coughs> Absolutely not. Because Paul says, don't use liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Don't do it just because you can. That, that's childish, right? <coughs> uh, but look at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. What seals you? The Holy Spirit of promise. So don't grieve it, right? Whereby ye are sealed unto what? The day of redemption. I can't lose it. I'm sealed unto the day of redemption. Because he's already put down the down payment. Of the, the house is being built as we speak through the inner man, right? And once the house is finished, when this dispensation is over, I'll be, I, then the house will be completed. God will get his possession. Is there a biblical reference to somebody that had, had that ceiling but was operating in their flesh? Or they still Corinthians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give us a yeah, hold that. Hold that because I want to get this real quick. So go to Philippians 3 now. <coughs> Philippians 3. And look at verse 20. Look at Philippians 3, verse 20. For our conversation is where? In heaven. In heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. unto himself. Once you're saved, you are sealed until the day of redemption. God has put down the, per, the per, per, uh, 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 down payment. His credit is perfect, and he's going to redeem you at, the, at that particular time. He who had begun a good work in you will finish it until the day of redemption. Right. That's right. I always thought, I don't know if it's called a conversation, but you better translate it citizenship. I'm sorry? The word conversation, I've always been told, you better translate it citizenship. You can say that. You can say that. Uh huh. You can say that because our citizenship is in heaven. You can say that. Uh, now, okay. So, so go. I, I'll touch on the verse you talked about. Second Corinthians five. First Corinthians five. I'm sorry. First Corinthians five. L look at First Corinthians five. Now, this is an instance where you can grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but you won't lose your salvation. Look at 1 Corinthians 5, uh, look at verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Notice that the Gentiles were hideous, despicable people. And they said this type of fornication that these saints were doing was not even named among the Gentiles. Jesus. So they're doing something that the Gentiles didn't even consider bad. Right? That one should have his father's wife. He, this man took his father's wife. Now, was he saved? Oh. In 1 Corinthians 1, it tells us that he's talking to the saints of God. So this man was saved. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he had done this deed might be taken away from you. So Paul was not only mad at the person, but he's mad at the people that they didn't say anything about him. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present, as though I were present, concerning him that has so done this deed. Paul is saying, I've already judged him as if I'm there with you. And all I did was hurt it. Y'all watched it go on and didn't say nothing. Right? So understand, when Paul is talking to them in 2 Corinthians about repentance, he said, I regret that I had to write this letter to you. That's what he said, right? Uh, and keep going. Now, verse 4. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto who? Satan. Hold on now. Why would Paul deliver a saved man unto Satan? Tell you who is going to who is going to purge Israel during the tribulation? The Antichrist. The Antichrist. The rod of God's indignation is going to be the Antichrist. So God you allows the devil to do his dirty work, right? And so Paul said, I'm going to give this man over to Satan. Why? For the destruction of the what? Flesh. Why, Paul? That the spirit may be what? saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Right? So sometimes you're turned over to Satan and God allows that so that you can understand that, man, I don't need to be doing this. Because you grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And there are consequences. And there are consequences to your actions. Even though you're saved eternally, now obviously your sin is not an eternal consequence, but best believe you have consequences here on earth. Every, for every action, there's a reaction. You go out and murder somebody, you either, somebody will either murder you or you're going to go to jail. For everything you do, there's a consequence. Right? Now, notice that this same man, uh, I'll finish it because of the time, in 2 Corinthians, this same man, Paul says, to welcome the brother back in. See, he did it for a, re for a while so that Satan could destroy, destroy his flesh. But Paul says to welcome the brother back in. Right? Don't just leave him out there now. But just welcome it back in. That's the same way with us. When somebody does something, we don't, we, you know, we allow God to turn them over to Satan. But what we do is we welcome the brothers in. Don't be condemning people because they got this type of sin that you don't have. Right? Because they may be doing something you're not doing, but you are, you definitely doing something they may not be doing. Right? What was that? First Corinthians three fifteen. And if a man's work, every man's work shall be trapped, a man's work is not of God; it shall be burned, right? But he himself shall be what saved. Yet so is by fire. That's at the judgment seat of Christ. You won't receive that reward of the inheritance, 
because you lived your life and grievous to the spirit. But you still receive the inheritance. This might be a janitor. Yeah, you just might be Pastor L.H. preached on that. You're going to get there, but you just might be a janitor, right? <laughs> but, uh, but, but seriously, you're going to make it into heaven, but understand that there's governmental structures in heaven and in earth, right? But So, uh, so I, I wanted you to see that once you're saved, you're sealed eternally. You can't lose that. But God does not just want you to be saved. He wants you to come into the knowledge of the truth also. That takes required study and the Spirit of God bringing things to your remembrance. Uh, all minds and hearts clear? Amen. Yes? Okay, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for this time. We thank you for the word of God, the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We thank you for being able to uh, share the mystery of Christ, oh God. We hope that we've laid on the hearts of your people the truth of your word, that they may go study these things out to see whether these things be so. Father God, help them not to take my word for it. I'm just a messenger, that I, and I, all my job is to teach the word of God. I'm not a, a have dominion over their faith. I'm just a helper of their joy. I ask that you give them the mind to study these things out to see whether they be so. Father God, we thank you right now for those who are here. We thank you for the service today. We thank you that we're able to uh, stand before you right now, before the throne of grace, teaching the wisdom of God, teaching the, the, uh, the things that you would have us to do. Continue to help us, oh God, strengthen us in our daily walk, oh God, that we may not only study your word, but we, your word may effectually work in us. Help us not to adhere to the flesh, but reap, but reap those things of the spirit, which is everlasting life. And we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.